to the Women in Technology Spotlight. Uh, today I have with me CK Mittal. She is a governance, risk management and compliance analyst at Universal Logistic Holdings. Welcome, CK. Hi, Ronke. Hello, everyone. So nice to have you with me, CK. Um, thank you for coming on the series. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So my name is Chehek. So it's a little difficult to pronounce over here. So that's why I go by CK. Um, I prefer not using my surname when I tell my name because I feel my first name is my true identity because, you know, surname is first given by your parents and then it's given by your husband's family. So I just prefer my first name. I hope that's okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. So I'm a cybersecurity enthusiast by profession. Mm -hmm. I am a cook by passion mm -hmm. and I'm a homemaker at heart. <laughs> So this is pretty much about myself. Okay. So when you say um, you like to abbreviate your name because it's hard to pronounce here, where are you currently based? I'm currently based in US. I'm in Michigan right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So tell us a little bit about what you what brought you here. So you are um, a, a security specialist, obviously. So you're a woman in tech and you are living in the US. Um, tell us a little bit about your journey that took you there, a little bit about your education. Did you always know that you wanted to be in tech? Is this something that little CK already um, knew when she was uh, going to school? Um, well, when I was little, every day I had to pursue a new profession, you know. Some days I wanted to be a doctor, some days I wanted to be, you know, in uh, business. But I think IT was never on the list. So I would say... Um, as they say that unexpected journey sometimes lead you to the beautiful destinations. So IT happened to me just like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So how is like that? How did that happen? So you went to school, what kind of school did you go to? So I went to um, a co-ed school uh, till my 10th. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, the grading system is a little different, different in India. Mm -hmm. So I chose um, non-medical, which is like apart from, uh, which is basically, I think, mathematics and basic sciences, physics and chemistry. So after I took my undergrad in computer science and engineering, mm -hmm. so I did not happen to land up in a very reputed institution because, you know, this was not what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So in India, it's basically like you have to choose a career which your uh, cousins are doing because, you know, uh, Indian parents are like they find other kids, you know, more um, uh, comparable to you mm -hmm. or you know, at a higher position than you. So it's like, OK, their son is doing IT. You need to do IT, too. His son is doing this. You need to do that, too. Mm -hmm. so this is how I chose. Uh, I came, you know, to this. <laughs> But after my undergrad, um, I did not want to do any corporate job. Mm -hmm. So I ended up teaching physics mm -hmm. for a couple of years. And I had a good reputation there with my students and my colleagues there. So one day while teaching, I thought that, no, I need to study more. I have to pursue a higher education. And then I sat up one day thinking what it should be. Like it should be physics, which I have been teaching now and I kind of have a good career. Or I should do something which I had done um, in my undergrad to you know, continue those in my master's. Mm -hmm. So um, when I told you that every day I wanted to choose a new profession, you know, the little CK. Mm -hmm. So there was one thing which was consistent after uh, you know, um, I ended my teenage. So that was to join armed forces or intelligence. Mm -hmm. And despite clearing all the exams and qualifying for everything, mm -hmm. I somehow due to family reasons, you know, I could not pursue that. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to catch the malicious minds and the bad people. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I was looking for some courses at a university, like Thapar University, where I did my master's from. Mm -hmm. So there I found something, the words like ethical hacking, uh, you know, they enthralled me. And I wanted uh, to give it a try that how it might go. 
And that came to such an extent that I did my second master's in cybersecurity from Eastern Michigan after coming here. And yes, I am chasing the bad people now. <laughs> So that's interesting. You have always been passionate about, um, you know, upholding the good and chasing the bad people. And I think that is something that has become actually more important in this digital age, you know, with all we, I mean, I also work in security and there's with all the breaches going on and, and you know, security being a big topic. So this is something you're passionate about. And tell me a little bit more about what you do there. So at my company, I started as a SOC analyst where I was working with, um, you know, SIM tools and uh, working on and off, you know, on the red team and blue team. But after that, I found my uh, passion in DRC, like, okay, the, the foundation of security lies in having, uh, you know, a good policy structure at your company. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, policies, procedures, and risk management framework, they, they are the foundation. So yes. if the foundation is strong, mm -hmm. you know, then I think the building which you build on that would be stronger. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wanted to go to the root level of security and, you know, work there. Yeah. So we are doing this series for women who are not really already in tech and they're not as familiar with all these, um, these topics as we are. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about what a SOC analyst does, what the red team and the blue team is, and um, maybe also what, what um, you're actually doing now, what, what makes up your job, you know, so they can get a picture of what kind of role you're filling out now. Right, so basically it's like um, <clears throat> red team is you are continuously acting like the bad guys, Mm -hmm. and blue team is like you're acting like the cops mm -hmm. so being in security is like you need to play the good cop bad cop mm -hmm. you know so so that is what red team and blue team is like um so for example i would just for the people who are you know uh, not that tech savvy so i would say that for example um you have a house and you have a robber mm -hmm. you try to think of the ways a robber can rob your house when you try when you try to do those things, you're acting like a red team. Mm -hmm. And when you think of the things that how you can protect your house from being robbed, you're acting like a blue team. Mm -hmm. So this is what basically I would say is yeah. the judge. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds like like playing cops and robbers as uh, adults, you know, on the job. Yes. And I think that that would be very interesting, trying to put yourself in the mind of the criminal and trying to understand what he will um, do to breach your, you know, your, your um, data and, and um, yeah. trying to defend against that. That sounds already very interesting. But then you said um, you thought it was necessary to think about um, also the foundation of what um, the security you're doing is built on. So tell us a little bit about your job now. What does that yeah. look like? Now my job is like I told you, um, the robbers in the house. So my job is to create a security system for the house. I just uh, talking as an example. Yes. That how safe the house should be so that no one can able to, you know, no one is able to uh, intrude in your house. Mm -hmm. So basically that is my job currently that how the architecture should be, how the system should be, how the defense around your house should be. So basically that is the gist of how my job goes. Mm -hmm. I see. <laughs> yeah. And also one part, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, please. Uh, also one part of GRC is about uh, security awareness and training. Mm -hmm. So I conduct uh, phishing campaigns mm -hmm. um, in, inside my company to see that who all fall for it, mm -hmm. you know? So the basic, um, or the strongest, the basic and the strongest uh, target are the people, mm -hmm. you know, yes. Yes. the social engineering techniques, which lure us to, okay, this is, I'm getting this free. Okay, let me click and see what is it. Mm -hmm. So this lurement basically, you know, catches you up and, you know, takes you deep into uh, being a victim. Yeah. This is what I try to prevent. Yeah. I, I understand this because I know that social engineering and phishing is uh, one of the biggest threats to corporate um, environments and also to, to personal computing um, because uh, the human is always the weakest link. We are easy to trick, right? Yeah. 
Yes. I know that you're also passionate about helping people who are um, maybe victim of, of, of some kind of hacking or something. I think you try to educate people also as a, as a calling, I might say. Is that right? Yes. So when I started teaching, I thought that, okay, this is something I am good at. Mm -hmm. So talking to people, um, going to their level of understanding and then, you know, teaching them that how they understand things. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, there are a lot of people out there who have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they just hear on the TV that, OK, there's a ransomware attack, but they don't know what's a ransomware attack. Yes. People are, so I conducted a research when I was at my university doing my master's. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, you know, there was a set of questions like how often do you use smartphone? How often do you click on the links which are sent to you by unknown people and such like that? Mm -hmm. So I had these uh, random people filled out that survey. And what I concluded was that uh, especially women mm -hmm. in rural areas, who are uneducated are more prone to um, this, uh, this kind of attack. Mm -hmm. So I, then I thought that, okay, I can do something to uh, teach them. So they won't understand the uh, heavy terms or technical terms. They would understand very um, you know, genuine or very basic language. So that's why I thought that the best way to reach them is by broadcasting myself. So I started my YouTube channel uh, last year and um, I wanted to uh, tell them, okay, what is cybersecurity? So not getting technical. So just, just telling them cyber means anything you do with internet mm -hmm. and security means you have to be safe there. So I to uh, told them, I made videos about how can you be financially safe? How can you keep your phone safe, your email safe? And yes, it's still going on. <laughs> Yeah. So this is such an important topic. And I love that you have a YouTube channel around that. And I would love to link this to, to this interview when it's uh, done, because I think that everyone should have uh, access to this kind of information because, you know, our whole world is now a digital world and everyone, you know, has a computer or a smartphone and, you know, we have our bank accounts on the phone. So it's a very important thing that you're doing here. And um, I, I find it interesting that uh, you found it's especially on a low, uh, women with lower education status who are victim of such attacks. Do you think that this is because um, women on a whole are not so much in contact with technology? I mean, you and I, we work in tech, but most women don't. So do you see a gap there in how women approach technology and men, how men approach it? Yes, I do uh, think there is a difference somewhere. There is a gap which is lying. Mm -hmm. So I would say that the thing is, um, men, when you talk about uh, jobs in tech, mm -hmm. or you see about uh, you know students who are pursuing IT, mm -hmm. you see there is um, a gender gap. Yeah. So um, in India, if you see um, in the reputed institutions, there is like one girl after every 10 boys, mm -hmm. right? And when you see in the jobs or even in the jobs you go on senior management or C-suit, you see men out there. Mm -hmm. So I think that women are not uh, given those many opportunities to reach there. And that's where we have started women in technology clubs mm -hmm. so that you know women gather together, they uh, use their references, their contacts and um, help place them where they, they should be. Yes, that's an important point. And that's also something I would want have wanted to talk to you about since um, you also went to a technical um, field. How did you experience this gender disparity? Did you find it difficult to work with mainly men or would you have preferred to have more women around you? Tell me a little bit about how you experienced this. <laughs> so this is something which, you know, um, is a part of my life since uh, I guess four years now. So um, it's that. So when I talk about um, in my present job scenario, it's like in my team there are 
four people and I'm the only girl there. <laughs> so yes, um, sometimes I do feel that there should be, um, there should have been a female colleague so that, you know, you can, you have a good repo and you can share certain things which you cannot with the male colleagues. Yeah, so, so yeah, there's um, a little bit of uncomfortable, um, you know, scenarios which are, which I have to deal with. But on a whole, it's like how you carry yourself mm -hmm. and how strong you feel, even if you are the only one. So what I say to myself is, okay, um, lions or lioness, they stand alone in the jungle. So yes, I am that lioness. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it's a, a lot is about your personal and the presentation, you know, how you present yourself. And I think that's important to talk about because um, I think for a lot of women also, it's a bit scary to think about working in tech because they are afraid of the situation of being the only woman. Mm -hmm. so it's good to talk about yeah. how you can um, experience this also as a positive thing maybe or how you can deal with it so it's uh, a, a good method to just see yourself as this lioness who is who's doing her thing and presenting herself I like yeah. that so to all the women I mean um, we definitely we talk about women empowerment we talk about gender equality mm -hmm. we um, post about it every everywhere mm -hmm. but I somehow feel that it is still not in action. It is still not that much in action, yeah. right? We see um, the inequality everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That we are now talking about this more because this has changed over the last, actually it's about like five, six years that this has really become more obvious, you know, and it's been a big talk <clears throat> on LinkedIn. You will see a lot of posts, you will see a lot of, um, also information about these female uh, women networks that we talked about. And this is a great thing. But if you then go into the workplace, it's the, the reality is still there are more men and less women. But still, yeah. um, you are obviously quite successful in what you're doing. And um, I know that there is a, a path for women out there. Tell me um, a little bit about um, how you feel. How can I put this? What your career path will be going forward? Where do you see yourself going? Um, well, I see myself uh, in five years down the line. I see myself uh, having um, a very good knowledge of my subject. Mm -hmm. I am uh, teaching maximum people and maximum people are aware of uh, you know the um, online security and how to be safe from the frauds which are happening so I want to reach out to more and more people mm -hmm. <clears throat> also I want to be the best wherever I am mm -hmm. right so I don't want to say that okay I want to be a manager or I want to be a CEO I just want to say that Whatever I do, I want to be the best in what I am doing. And I motivate more and more women to stand up, to inspire themselves and to join the field. Because yes, we need women in uh, technology a lot. Yeah, I love that your goals and your future outlook is more around, you know, empowering other people and not, oh, I want to be this and this and this. But you, <laughs> your, your goal is to... to something for the community this is a great thing so and I think that is so important and it brings me to a sp special topic and you actually started this by saying we need more women and I think this is one of the reasons why we need more women because women have different goals you know even mm -hmm. in tech women have a different approach and a different view and they try to um, how can I say this use tech for good maybe this is um yeah, this is a way to put it. So their agenda is of not so much about money, but it's more about community and uh, and doing something useful with it. Do you right. see that? Yes, I do see that. In every work field, whether uh, it's IT or it's, um, you know, medical sciences, it's teaching, anything. So I think that the outlook which women have that is more stable that is more secure and that um, is for all 
I wouldn't say that it's not for a particular section. So I think women incorporate everyone, they think about everyone, and they make sure that what they are doing, everyone benefits from that. Mm -hmm. so this is one, um, you know, the outlook or one thinking which, you know, incorporating women in, um, in the work field would uh, bring as a benefit. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. I think this, this uh, community mindedness that women bring <clears throat> Is, is beneficial for everyone also for the men working there yes. and since you mentioned motherhood I just wanted to touch on another subject and that's the flexi flexibility of working in tech there's another reason I like bringing more women in tech and that is that you can earn good money and it's a flexible lifestyle because you know even before the pandemic there was a lot of home office flexible work hours and all that mm -hmm. so um, do you also see that as a benefit, you know, this, this kind of lifestyle that uh, working in tech makes possible? Or do you already experience the benefits of this flexibility and, and also the stable good income? Uh, yes, income wise, I think um, it's really good. Not just IT, I would say uh, even uh, the uh, education sector is really good. And uh, even if you're a doctor, I think you make um, way more money than I think any profession does. Mm -hmm. So um, talking about work from home, so I personally, I have to go to office daily and my oh, husband okay. is working remote. So um, it's like I sometimes want to work remote and he wants to go to office sometimes. Yeah. So it's like, I think a hybrid culture is a better option. Yeah. Yeah, I was the, also thinking more in terms of a hybrid option that gives you the flexibility to maybe pick up a kid from school and, and thing. So because I always felt that this kind of hybrid workspace uh, gives you more flexibility to integrate your private life with your professional life. Because in a classic job, when you are in the office from nine to five or six or seven every day, it's really hard, you know, to have a family. And I think uh, this new flexibility that is coming into the workplace is also something that will make it easier for women to, um, yeah, to become a, a, a bigger part of, of this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is my thinking. I don't know how you experience it. And I'm, in, I'm a bit surprised that you say you have to go to the office every day. This is interesting. This is uh, not so typical for a tech job, right? Yes, actually, I think logistics industry works a little different. So maybe due to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So we talked uh, about how you became a woman in tech, which is an interesting story, uh, thinking that you became a computer scientist because uh, your family kind of pushed you into that because your cousins are also uh, doing something similar. Which is an, so that's an interesting approach to an education, you know, to say, oh, your cousins are doing that, go and do it as well because it's a good thing. <laughs> but uh, what I like about it is the fact that um, it doesn't discern in whether you're a girl or a boy, you know, so it's just education. And that's a good thing about, you know, Indian and African culture, actually, that it's education, get an education, you know. Yeah. And yeah, and we talked about what you do in your job and what you're passionate about, yeah. you know, the whole topic of um, um, educating people on security, how to be secure. And please don't forget to give me your YouTube link. And um, just as a wrap up of this interview, uh, because you're also passionate about bringing more women into tech, yes. tell me a little, maybe a tip or two you would give to young women setting out to encourage them to come and join us. Uh, so one tip, not just one, I think uh, there would be uh, three or four liners I wanna just say to all the women out there that um, some way or the other, you know, we are being pushed down maybe by the family, society, or the complexes, anything. So to all the women out there, you need to accept yourself the way you are. You need to love yourself the way you are. Um, people might find you drop dead gorgeous, or some people might find you shit ugly, but how you feel about yourself, that matters the most. Mm -hmm. So, it took me um, two decades to understand this thing that um, no matter what you do, no matter how much you do, someone somewhere will always be unhappy, always. You cannot please 100% of people all the time. Yes. And especially um, in the social media age, 
when um, it's so confusing uh, to differentiate between the voices that actually matter, um, then the voices which, you know, uh, the anonymity which the web offers them. Mm -hmm. So just do not listen to anything. Trust yourself, accept yourself the way you are and just head towards your journey. Mm -hmm. so this is what I want to say to everyone out there. This is great. And this is so important to understand that the person you have to look in the mirror every day is you and you have to be the one who has a good opinion of yourself. Yes, because at the end of the day, no one knows you best than yourself. Yeah. So this is a good uh, ending to our interview. Thank you so much for your wise words here. And thank you for giving me your time for this interview. And um, it was thank you. I am uh, obliged that, you know, you uh, called me here. <laughs> <laughs>